Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Michael Zizis, Morgan Stanley's Global Head of Fixed Income and Thematic Research. And I'm Serena Tang, Chief Global Cross Asset Strategist. And on this episode of the podcast, we'll discuss what the elections in the US and Europe mean for global markets. It's Wednesday, July 9th at 10 a.m. in New York. As investors digest the results of the French election and anticipate the upcoming U.S. presidential election, there are some key debates that are surfacing. And so I wanted to sit down with Serena to dig into these issues that are top of mind for investors. Serena, do you expect the upcoming U.S. elections will impact markets in the run-up to November? Significantly not likely. Because if we look at history, for stocks, for example, In any election year, returns don't look significantly different from any other year. My team ran some cross-asset analysis on market behavior in and out of prior U.S. elections using as much data as we have. And what has been very interesting is that whether a Democrat or Republican candidate eventually takes the White House, that doesn't change the trend of returns into an election. The form of the future elected government, whether it is divided or unified, that has also never really bothered stock markets before the vote. And you can see very, very similar patterns in bond yields, the dollar, and gold. Now, what this means is that even if an investor has perfect foresight and know the results of the elections now, it won't necessarily give them an edge over the next few months. Now, beyond the election is really when you see performance in various election outcome scenarios really diverge. So whether the election was tight or not seemed to have led U.S. rates to see very different levels of returns 12 months out from an election. Whether the outcome means a unified or divided government saw very large swings in gold prices. Now, there are a lot of caveats. Every election is different. The economic conditions in every election is different. And as much as we talk about other historical periods, the truth is there aren't a lot of data points to work with. Data for S&P 500 going back to 1927 reaches the most far back among the major markets. But even then, it only covers 23 presidential elections. So what I'm trying to say is there have been a lot of presidents, but there aren't a lot of presidents, at least for markets. The U.S. election isn't the only election making headlines this year. For example, we just had an election in France that had a surprising result. How does the outcome there affect your outlook for markets? It doesn't, in short. It doesn't change our bullish view on European equities at all. As you know, we have been constructive on that market since January and added significant exposure in our asset allocation then, very much on the back of our European equity strategist, Marina Zavalok, coming out with an out-of-consensus bullish call for European stocks. We like the market because of its cheap optionality and convexity. It has about 20% revenue exposure to U.S., but at much cheaper valuation. And it has about 20% revenue exposure to EM, meaning should we get a growth surprise to the upside, you're geared to that, but at much lower volatility than owning EM equities outright. Now, none of this has changed post-French elections, and we also don't see a significant increase in bearish tail risks. If you look at other markets like Euro IG corporate credit or the Euro, those markets are suggesting risks in France are idiosyncratic, not systemic. So we maintain our overweight in European stocks. Everything that I just said is also true for our bullish view on Indian equities uh, even after elections a month ago. Ritam Desai, head of India Research, argued the election outcome there is likely to usher in more structural reforms and really reinforces our forecast of 20% annual earnings growth over the next five years, sustaining India's longest and strongest bull market ever. Bullish secular factors for Indian equities have not changed, and therefore our bullish view on Indian equities have not changed. And elections have consequences for how countries interact with one another and how their policies differ from one another. And one area of the markets that tend to be sensitive to this is the foreign exchange markets. So are there any impacts you're looking for around foreign currencies? Yes, uh, in particular, the dollar. But let me start with the euro first, because I talked earlier about our bullish view on European equities. And in fact, in our asset allocation, we actually have a higher allocation to Europe versus U.S. for stocks, bonds and corporate credit bonds. The one European market we're more cautious on is the euro. And 
this actually has nothing to do with the French election results per se, because what matters now really is dollar strength. Now, part of this is a rates differential issue. Our U.S. economics team are expecting the Fed to start cutting in September, while the ECB, of course, has already started easing policy. So yield differentials really favor the dollar here. But we also need to factor in the election, which seems to be a theme for today. Our FX strategy team thinks markets will really need to start pricing in material likelihoods of dollar positive changes in U.S. fiscal, foreign and trade policy as the election approaches, meaning the dollar will continue its modest uptrend into the second half. And geopolitical uncertainty, of course, will also be dollar positive. So bottom line then, elections clearly have consequences for markets, but in the run-up to an election, there might not be a reliable pattern. Exactly. Great. Well, Serena, thanks for taking the time to talk. Great speaking with you, Mike. And as a reminder, if you enjoy the podcast, please take a moment to rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts and share thoughts on the market with a friend or colleague today. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you.